This occurred in 1966, when I was nine years old. I experienced my near-death experience at a martial arts lesson. Every single mother was carrying her child to her car to be picked up from school, as we could see as we walked out onto the sidewalk. It was such a beautiful spring day. I was taking Peter on a walk as he trained in judo. He could roll his opponent over his shoulder, similar to a judo throw or roll, and lay them flat on the ground. I asked him to show it to me since I was intrigued. It was not on a judo mat. It was on concrete. But he made it work. I was launched headfirst onto the concrete because Peter had botched the execution. When I crashed into the pavement, I had a severe head injury. A searing ache tore through me like lightning racing down my body. I got up and started running, taking the same route back toward the playground to get to the nurse's office. That's when I lost consciousness and hit the ground, hitting my forehead badly and hitting my head on the pavement again. Even as I fainted, my awareness did not waver. I was nowhere all of a sudden. The most puzzling feature is the absence of space and time. The present moment was all that mattered. Time seemed to stop. I descended into an unfathomable, ethereal state of thought. I was not myself, in a conventional sense. I had the impression that I was a sphere of consciousness floating through space in this ever-changing present instant. There was only darkness at first, along with no light, gravity, or senses of any kind. I was aware, but I had no structure to help me find my identity, ground myself, or make sense of what was happening. The crash was terrible and chaotic, but I don't remember it. As the dread increased, a wave of helplessness and insanity passed over me. If I went nuts, there was nothing at all I could do, I knew. Consequently, I overcame my fear and moved on. Among the lovely sensations I experienced as I released were peace, serenity, quiet, relaxation, and contentment. I was very happy as these feelings intensified. It was astounding. Abruptly, my attention was drawn to a speck of white light. I don't know how I knew, but I felt forced to move in the direction of the light. As I advanced, the light grew brighter, more intense, and encompassed me. I was the white light, and it was love without limits. It was perfect and thorough. However, the phrase infinite sounds a little awkward. Wave after wave of pure white love enveloped me, a liberating flood. I find that if I close my eyes, I can instantly go back there. It was as if everything was glowing and alive, rather than actual objects. That's impossible to put into words how real that felt. There was no such thing as time or place as we understand it in our language. Neither a chronological order of events, nor a physical location existed. I am unable to determine the exact duration because time did not exist. I observed my consciousness sphere floating around in this white light. It was named after my dog, Skippy, who passed away many years ago. I couldn't even identify the accident or understand what was going on, yet there he was, a fellow zone of consciousness. Skippy and I were both very familiar. We had a loving and mutually understood psychic chat. Skippy, I adore you. I love you so much. Where are you at this moment? Tell me what is happening. My love was returned, and we became one. There was also another floating awareness, more complex than the first. If gender held any significance in this situation, it emanated a masculine vibe. It was clear from his words, come here, that he knew who I was. Permit me to show you a couple of things. I was absorbed by him and grew to be a part of him. The best way I can express it is that I got a barrage of questions answered in an instant. I understood everything, including how the universe functions and our missions. It was a reiteration of existing facts, not new knowledge. Words are simply symbols, after all, and they cannot fully capture the feeling. I long to relive a portion of it. And he continued, Raymond, I want to show you who you really are. I am sadly unable to identify or give name to this creature. The universe blazed and unfurled before my eyes, taking me to a completely new realm. The white light must have been living love, if such a thing is possible. Spots of light rotating around a bright nucleus appeared, akin to the Hubble Space Telescope observing galaxies. I was but one of those innumerable bright spots. They were all alive, and we were all depending on each other. This was God, and it appeared to be a unified being. But when I refer to God or the name God, I doubt that you mean God. Although I'm not religious, there's a verse in the Bible that says, I am that I am. And it's exactly right. I can't seem to find it right now.
The verb I am that I am, as opposed to the term God, characterizes God's essence. That's how it seemed, as though each tiny item had a purpose, and those shining dots stood for all the people who had ever existed. We were in this together, shouting, and I was a shining beacon. It sounded like music, but we don't really grasp what music is. It was colorful, three-dimensional, animated, and brimming with life. The lively music was being accompanied by our singing. The song that we were all singing sounded like a worship song. It was written in the lyrics, We love you, we are love. I could almost go back there since it was so lovely. It was obviously not my time, and I had to go back. I didn't understand what back meant, and there were no words. I didn't recall the accident, and whatever was going on here was not going to be this deep, beautiful, joyful experience. I retaliated, vowing not to go back. They assured me that everything would be okay, and that I could come back whenever I had achieved my objective, which I did. Not like how I used to say, being returned to my body, it was as though reality had been reassembled. Imagine making a smooth smoothie with some liquid, bananas, and apples. I'm aiming for that visual analogy. Now turn it around and do the opposite. From liquid to solid, more akin to reality piecing itself together. I was back on the schoolyard in an instant, but this time I was in terrible pain. I opened my ice-packed eyes to find myself surrounded by emergency workers. Someone yelled, wake up, Raymond, and slapped me across the face. You're not real. I battled mightily to get back to that condition. Get back into your bed. Hurry up. During a medical emergency, my journey to the hospital was hastened. It had been 12 minutes between the first information that I wasn't breathing and the second notification that I was breathing regularly. My mother, the director of nursing, informed me. Although the fire department was not far away and arrived quickly, I'm not sure how long I was gone. When you were in that intense, boundless love condition, it felt possible. Our goal is to love. That is our life's work, and love is more complicated than the warm, fuzzy feelings we typically associate with the word. Yes, I have, but love is more than just that. The complicated part is that love is the source of everything. We are here because love is the central theme of this. While it could be difficult to do so in a hygienic manner, we are here to support you in realizing your great potential and learning to appreciate skin on. That concluded things. So, what are my feelings about the state of the world today? Is a new awareness or awakening on the horizon? Looking at the state of circumstances today, one can easily become disheartened due to the multitude of evils that exist in the world. Please, please, let this not be the case. Even so, I think we've forgotten who we really are. I am that I am. We've all forgotten who it is, don't you think? I sincerely believe that in this incredibly practical life, what we call reality is actually God playing hide-and-seek with himself. Even when everything appears so convincing and real, God occasionally pulls a peekaboo and shows us who we really are. It appears that we have forgotten about it. That is the current state of affairs. All violence and misery in the world stems from our collective identity crisis. Is the emergence of a new consciousness imminent? Since I would want to know the answers, I sincerely hope that I do. I can usually find the good, the majestic, and the gorgeous in anything, so yes, I do have hope. Everything will come down to love in the end. That's the location of the magic. 